Hello, hello everyone. I'm back for day two of uh, 40 days of prayer and thanksgiving in the seven spheres, um, which is the mental, physical, social, financial, spiritual, environmental, and vocational. Um, and I'm just winging it again today, so I'm just going to start out by saying a prayer. Pray with me. Lord Jesus, I thank you for another day. Um, thank you for waking us up today. Thank you for keeping our hearts beating and our lungs breathing and our eyes seeing for those of us who have the privilege of sight. Um, Lord, you provide all of our needs and sometimes that isn't what we expect or what we want, but you know it's what we need to satisfy our soul, bring us closer to you and be able to carry out your will. So, Father, I just pray that you bless this time this morning. Um, just fill my mouth with whatever it is that you want me to say. And I pray that you just soften people's hearts, open their ears, and allow them to hear and receive what it is that you have for us today. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, folks. So, something on my heart this morning is just being a good steward of the time that God gives us. Um, so, vocationally... You know, whatever our, you know, your vocation is your calling, um, your job, whatever the Lord wants you to put your hands to in order to serve him. And that looks different for all of us. Doesn't matter what your vocation is and whether or not you believe it is your vocation. Because I know I've had seasons where I really wanted to be out of them. I was like, Lord, when is this season going to end? so I can do what I really want to do. And, you know, God knows what we need to be doing because even though I would say that, you know, he would always show me why the season I was in was the perfect season for me. And so it was a constant just push and pull struggle in my heart and soul and spirit of just like, I want to be doing something else, but wow, God, you're so good. You're so faithful. Like, this is the perfect job for me right now. And so he would give me insight and hindsight uh, as to why he had me doing that job. Oops. Sorry, folks. <sighs> the was trying to silence those notifications. Let me just try to do it right now. Here we go. Okay. Hopefully that'll mute everything. Um, anyways, um, so yeah, God is perfect in everything that he does and he assigns us to different occupations and, and places of service and even he gives us the occupation of serving certain people during certain seasons of our lives. So different people might come into your life and they require a lot from you. <laughs> they require a lot of energy. They require a lot of help. Um, and sometimes we might not feel like um, helping them or dealing with them or talking to them. And But if, you know, the way I see it is that God doesn't call everyone to be everywhere serving the same way at the same time so if he's put certain people in your path or put certain people on your heart you know then it's you know pretty clear that it's your job to steward that relationship and steward your time well in order to serve that person in the way that god is showing you but first you need to be available um before god to know, all right, Lord, I'm coming before you in prayer and I'm asking, what is it that you want me to do for this person? How can I serve them? How how can I pray for them? Am I supposed to, do I have to deal with this? You know, a lot of the time it can feel like that. And usually the answer is yes. That's why God put them into your life. So it's like, Lord, that's why we have to come before the Lord so often and ask what it is that he wants us to do. Um, rather than, again, taking things personally and making it about ourselves. Um, selfishness is, you know, Satan always wants us to think that it's about us. And it's just so classic. Like, it's this classic, you know, method of just like, 
whispering like, oh my gosh, that inconveniences you, Velvet, because da da da. And I'm like, yeah, like, I don't need to be dealing with this right now. Like, and God's like, yo, I did that. Like, I wanted you to, I wanted to use you for that, you know? And so if we, we really have to start with changing our perspective into being a servant first it has to start there first like you have to change your the posture of your heart first and i mean first thing of the day uh first thing of every hour just always making sure your heart is in the right place because we just we're just naturally selfish people and so we have to learn to first be aware of that and then what do we need to do in order to check ourselves? If you need to set alarms on your phone, like check your check your heart posture right now. Like get back into, you know, get right with God again for the fifth time today, you know, or whatever. So anyways, um, yeah, it's just been on my heart this morning about stewarding time well. And it's just something to think about. Um, what is it that God called you to versus what you think you ought to be doing what is the season that God has you in versus the season that you wish you were in or the season you're trying to get out of because you think you need to be here and God's like no I want you there trust me I want to use you and you're gonna see things happen like you're gonna be a part of something bigger and it's gonna be a blessing to you it's gonna be a blessing to them and it might be a blessing to 10,000 other people and you have no idea because you're not God and you can't see all of the ripples that obedience has, that the effect of obedience has on the world. It's, you know, it really is that big. Like, I don't really know what the butterfly effect is, but I know the concept and that it is true. Like, your actions do affect everybody. And so are you walking in obedience or are you walking in selfish disobedience? And God has big plans for those who are walking in obedience. And sometimes he shows us and sometimes he doesn't, but that's not the point because one day you will be rewarded for your obedience. So anyways, I'm not going to talk much more. I'm just going to get into the prayer, guys, because we need to be encouraged today. All right. And uh, I'm still reading E.M. Bounds. <laughs> Let's be honest. I got like 500 more pages, but I just wanted to read this short uh, segment in order to get us ready for prayer. Okay. Quote, call unto me and I will answer thee and show thee great things and difficult which thou knowest not. How broad are these words of the Lord? How great the promise, how cheering to faith. They really challenge the faith of the saint. Prayer always brings God to our relief to bless and to aid and brings marvelous revelations of his power. What impossibilities are there with God? Name them. Nothing, he says. Nothing is impossible to the Lord. And all the possibilities in God are in prayer. Let's get into it, guys. All right. Lord Jesus, I just thank you so much for that truth. Nothing is impossible to you because you are creator of it all. You've existed for all of time you created time and you as the designer of everything know exactly where all the pieces fit together like a perfect puzzle that you created every single shape and every single space for every piece particle person to fit into as one giant working machine lord just a, an entity just perfectly functioning together with such amazing order just the planet with the order of the sunrise and the hours of the day and the sunset and the seasons and all the plants and animals lord just the circle of life father and just it's so amazing god just to see everything that you have designed and created we just we just can look around at all of the creation around us and just be in awe because you you made it lord and you put it into man's mind to create things and we've just come so far as 
a species to be living in houses with smartphones and electric fireplaces and driving luxurious vehicles, God. And Father, I just, um, I just thank you for just the revelation of the knowledge of you, um, just knowing you, Father, and, and know, and you knowing us, you, I don't know which is, it's more miraculous that the God of the universe knows us individually, or that us as individuals are given the gift and opportunity to know the creator of the universe. It is absolutely incredible, and, and then just knowing that you died for us individually you died to cover all of us individually and you want us to come to you individually it's absolutely amazing god and i just pray father that um you would just help us to keep that at the forefront of our minds lord especially as we're going around day to day and we we are always struggling with doing things for ourselves or doing things for you i pray that you help us to walk in the spirit in jesus name that we would just be listening to your still small voice that we would just be led by you and that we would just view you as our ultimate guide um, that we always want to follow, Lord, that we're not like on a tour and we're following the guide and then we're like, nah, like I'm going to go off <laughs> on my own trail and then just get lost and get separate, separated from the group, separated from the shepherd. Lord, help us not to do that. It's so foolish, but we're just always doing that. We're always just trying to be our own God and just just getting lost and getting distracted by something that's not part of what you want us to be focusing on right now and it truly is a battle it's a spiritual battle lord you tell us that the war is in the spirit it's not in the flesh and so we've got to just be you know thinking and using our god-given brains to be um just taking every thought captive and making it obedient to christ and just Lord, we're learning and you're helping us learn. And I just thank you so much that the work that you begin in us will be perfected. That was a promise. And you keep your promises. You are faithful to your own word. And this is so important, Lord. Help us to treasure that statement and just to cherish that and just to take it to heart, God, just knowing that we can just trust you fully, just fully trust you, God. And with that knowledge, help us to come to your throne. Help us to come to your fountain and just sit before you and spend time with you. You want to commune with us at the table. You just want to eat with us and and just talk to us and just reside and abide with us, Lord. And I just pray that you would help us to have the desire more and more to do that with you. I mean, how incredible is this that we have full access to you and your throne lord this is not a once a year the priest goes in and is able to you know ask you to forgive sin no you tore that curtain in half lord you just you ripped it down father and you just gave us that access that we can just freely enter into your presence at any time and just just talk to you and know you and listen to you and glean from you god and Lord, that is the gift of that time with you is absolutely priceless, Father. And forgive us, God, for just forsaking that gift and just for not entering into your gates at all. And just for just getting distracted and just dwelling in a place of misery and a place of distress and a place of um, just, yeah, again, de depression and, and, and selfishness and pity parties and all these things, Lord, you, you've given us the choice when you saved us. You, you said, you know, stay on the straight and narrow path, but it is a choice. We have to choose you daily and just make it, make it more alive for us, God. I, I hate even asking that because we have the truth. We, we know the truth. We have the, the salvation, uh, restore unto us the joy of our salvation and just make your word uh, just come on fire in our hearts and our minds today, Jesus. Um, we need you to do that. We need you to fan the flame, Lord. We need you to add more, add more fuel, God. Whatever you need to do to just rev up the engine of our faith, God, to just get us excited. Um, Lord, it's just if we keep our minds on you, those who keep their minds fixed upon you will have perfect peace, God. And that only comes from you because you're the Prince of Peace. So, Lord, help us to have peace in your presence. Help us to have peace when we're in our vocations. Help us to have peace when we're just 
you know, dealing with difficulties and struggles and difficult people and just problems in our in our jobs and in our bodies, Lord, and just with our finances and all these things, God, just just thank you, God, that you're the Prince of Peace and that when we ask you for peace, you give it to us. You said that in Philippians, you said, uh, do not be anxious for anything, but in every situation with prayer and thanksgiving, ask for peace and you will, uh, with you will give it to us, God. It will surpass our understanding. How we have this peace is peace that surpasses our understanding, Father, that we don't even understand how we could be peaceful. But just knowing that it comes from you, you're the source. And it's like you pour it into us, God. So I pray that you pour peace into us, Jesus, today, that you would just fill us up with it so that we would just be at peace, that we would be joyful, we'd have a fresh indwelling of the Holy Spirit, that we'd be able to um, just walk with strong faith today, shining bright lights, so that everywhere we go, God, people would be touched, they would feel your warmth, they would feel your love, they would see Christ in us, be drawn to us, God, that maybe we could have opportunities to pray for people, um, help us to be attentive of those things, and just aware, aware of, of you just speaking, like, hey, go over there, hey, speak to that person, hey, touch that person on the arm, hey, pat that person on the shoulder, Tell them they look beautiful today. Say hello. Smile at the cashier. You know, whatever it is, God. Help us to be attentive to these things, to be used for your kingdom, God. Because that is where the true satisfaction and worth comes in. Help us not buy into the lie that we need what we need or what we want. That's what Satan is saying, God. But what you're saying is, I know the plans that I have for you. Plans to give you a future, to prosper you, God. And you know best, God. So we just we just lift up our hands and praise God and thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Thank you that you know us. Thank you that you know what we need, Lord, and that you have everything that we need in you. You are all sufficient, Jesus. I just pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Okay. I'm ready for the day now. I don't know about you, but I'm ready. I'm ready. Okay. What is that? SpongeBob? <laughs> well, I was born in 92. Okay. Any 92 people out there? All right. Anyway, guys, I hope this encouraged somebody out there. Let me know that you were here. Throw a comment. Throw a like. Anything that touched you in particular, leave it down below. And again, if you need prayer, message me. But let's stay prayed up, all right? This is day two of 40. Hey, it could be 400. I don't know. I'm not sure. I just know that I need to stay encouraged <laughs> during this time. So see you guys tomorrow. God bless.